Now that we've got a foundation of a statistical study and the design and how to collect data from a random sample, we're ready to visually represent the data that we've collected. First, we're going to visually represent the frequency of the data from our study using frequency tables, histograms, and other ideas. First, the frequency table. I have an example of a frequency table here on the right. What a frequency table does is it partitions data into classes or groups of equal width to show how many values fall within each class. As you can see, I've collected the heights of several basketball players in a quick sample and then grouped them into groups of 50 to 55 inches tall, 56 to 61 inches tall, and so on, and classified the frequency for each of these classes. The class limits, that center column, represents the smallest and largest values that can fit into that class. The class boundaries on the left column represent the non-data values that separate a class. Usually they have a 0.5 at the end of them because I'm just measuring to the closest inch, so nobody has a 0.5. So we go 0.5 below and 0.5 above each class limit. Now, to make a frequency table, we need several equations to build all the necessary components. First, to calculate the class width, how wide each bar is going to be, we take the largest value, subtract the smallest value, and then divide that answer by the number of classes we want. Usually this gives us a decimal, but even if it gives us a whole number, we must round up, regardless of the decimal, we will always round up to the next whole number above whatever this equation gives us. Then our first class will start with the smallest number, and when I add the class width, that'll be the starting number of the next class. I'll show you what this looks like in an example in just a moment. Sometimes we might be interested in what's the midpoint of any one of our classes, and that's just the average of the class limits. We add the lower class limit to the upper class limit and divide by two, to find where the middle of any given class falls. We also might be asked to give the relative frequency, or a decimal out of 1, for any class. To calculate the relative frequency, we just have to divide the frequency by the number of data values in our total sample. And finally, we also might be interested in the cumulative frequency. The cumulative frequency tells us all the values that hit that class or lower. So to get that value, we just add all the previous classes together to see what our cumulative frequency is as we build our table. I'm going to show you how to build a frequency table in Excel. Nice part about Excel is we can type in equations as needed, and there's three special equations we're going to use. One is equals max, equals min, and equals sum. These give us the maximum, minimum, or the sum of all the data values that we're working with. Let's take a look at what this looks like in Excel. What I have here is the commuting distance in miles of 60 different people that I've sampled. If I wanted to make a frequency table, we need to first know the width of our classes. I'll hit equals to generate a formula open a parenthesis for the numerator, and then our formula says we take the maximum minus the minimum. So I'll type in max, open a parenthesis, and select all the data values. Close the parenthesis, minus, we want to subtract the minimum value, open a parenthesis, select all my data, close the parenthesis on the minimum function, and then I have to close the parentheses on the numerator. Then we're going to divide by, using the slash, the number of classes we want. Let's say we're going for six classes. When I hit enter, I get 7.6666. So when I round up to the next number, I'm going to round that up to 8. My class width is 8. Now we're ready to make a list of the lower limits and the upper limits of my various classes. The first class needs to start with the minimum. So we'll hit equals min and select all the data values, close the parentheses, and hit enter. Looks like my lowest value is 1. 
To get the next lower limit, we'll hit equals. We'll select the previous class to say we want that previous class to increase plus by 8. We figured 8 was the width of the classes for this example. And when I hit Enter, it gives me 9 for the lower limit of the next class. If I grab that dot in the bottom right corner and stretch it down, it'll copy that formula down so I get my total of six classes. My upper limits need to start right before the next lower limit. So you can see my first lower limit starts at 1. The next one's at 9. So the upper limit must be 8. From here on out, the upper limits are going to also increase by the class width of 8. So I will hit equals, grab the previous limit, and hit plus 8. Clicking that bottom corner and stretching down will give me all my new lower limits. Let's say if I want my bounds. Those are those points that are 0.5 off of the limits. Let's do our lower bound and the upper bound. For the lower bound, I can hit equals and then select the lower limit. And we want to be 0.5 before it. So I'm going to subtract 0.5 and hit Enter. And that'll give me the value 0.5 below the lower limit. My lower bound's 0.5. And I can grab that dot, drag it down, and there's all my lower limits. Similarly, for my upper limits, I can hit Equals, click the upper limit, and we want to move to the right of the upper limit by 0.5. So I'm going to do plus. 0.5. And that gives me 8.5. And notice 1 through 8 fall between 0.5 to 8.5. Grab that dot and stretch down, and there's my upper bounds. All right, we're ready to find that all important frequencies. You could, for your frequencies, go through and make tally marks and count all 60 data values, but I'm going to show you how Excel can help us actually calculate those frequencies a lot quicker for us. First, if you've never used the statistics data pack that comes with Excel, you're going to have to turn it on. To turn it on, you'll click File, go down to Options, select Add-ins, and then you want to look for the Analysis Tool Pack. Click Go, and make sure you check the Analysis Tool Pack and hit OK. That part you only have to do once for life. Now we're ready to use the Analysis Tool Pack, which is under Data. Over on the right, under Analysis, you'll see Data Analysis. Click the Data Analysis, and look through the list for the option marked Histogram. Okay, and then we have to tell it where to find all of our information. First, the input range. Click the little arrow next to input range, and you want to select all of the data values in our data set. For the bin range, the bin range, these are the upper limits of each of the classes. Select bin range and then select all the upper limits. Then output range. Select output range if it's not already selected. And then you're going to tell it where you want the data to fall that it's going to calculate. Let's just stick it underneath my chart, actually. So the cell I select here, B19, is going to be the first cell of my output data. When I hit OK, it gives me really quickly the bin number, 8, 16, 24. Those are the same as my upper limits. And the frequencies for my frequency distribution. Let's fill them in. 14, 21, 11, 6, 4, and 4. It always creates a more row. If you've done this correctly, more should always have zero data values. 
We've, cal we've calculated now our frequency distribution, but let's also fill in some more information. Let's find the midpoint, the relative frequency, and the cumulative frequency for each of these rows. First, for the midpoint, that's an equation. It's that we take the limits and find their average. So we'll equal equals, open a parenthesis for the numerator, click the lower limit, plus the upper limit. Close the parentheses and divide by 2 because there's two data values. 4.5 is our first midpoint. And if I grab that arrow and scroll down, we end up with all of our midpoints. Relative frequency says we're going to take the frequency for that row and divide by the total number of frequencies. So first we need to figure out what the total number of frequencies is. Underneath here, I'm going to hit equals, sum for sum, open up parentheses, and then I'm going to select all the frequencies. And when I close the parentheses, I see I've got a total of 60 values. So for my relative frequency, we'll take that individual frequency and divide by the total. Equals, grab the relative frequency, and then divide. And I'm going to manually type in the 60 here because I don't want that number to change as I scroll through the options. Otherwise, it'll scroll down looking for different sums. We don't want to do that. So we'll type in the 60 because we want that to stay the same. When I grab that dot and scroll down, it's going to divide each frequency by 60. To find the cumulative frequencies, all we have to do is add all the frequencies that came before it. So the first frequency started at 14. There's nothing to add there. But the second frequency, we'll say equals. And we'll take the 21, the frequency from this row, and add the previous cumulative frequency. Now when I grab that dot and scroll down, we get all the cumulative frequencies. Now that we've gotten good at making frequency distributions, let's talk about how we can visually represent the frequency distribution with a histogram. A histogram has several bars where the height of the bar represents the frequency within that range. You'll notice the bar will hit the number line on the boundary points. The bars should always touch each other unless there's a gap in the data. And it's always important to have title, a title for the entire histogram and labels for the x and y axes. Notice I have the exact same information in this histogram, but I can visually see now that shorter group is taller than the next group, which is taller than the next group, and then the next group. I can visually see that more people are between 49 and 61 than between 61 and 74. Let's look at how Excel can help us make a histogram. From the data analysis tool pack, there's a histogram option, but we'll need to make some edits to correct it because Excel does not quite make it correctly. Let's take a look at our data. Very similar to how we found the bin and frequencies, we're going to click the data analysis button. We'll select the histogram option. If we haven't done it already, we'll do the input range by selecting our data, the bin range by selecting our upper limits, the output range is where we want to stick the data. But what we're going to change now is we're going to select that we also want a chart output. This time when I hit OK, it's going to give me a histogram as well as the bin information. But there's some problems here. First, the bars are not touching each other. To fix that, if I double click a bar, Excel should open up this format data series. And one option is gap width. Shrink that gap width down to 0%. And now the bars are touching each other. Next, we need to give it a descriptive title. Histogram is never a descriptive title. We're talking about commuting distance here. At the bottom, bin is not a descriptive title either, or a descriptive label for the x-axis. It, these numbers represent the distance, and let's give it some units. Maybe we're talking about miles. We don't really need the key because there's only one value in there. And now I've got a decent histogram. I'd probably want to make this larger so that I could see it better. 
but for our sakes today, that's going to be sufficient. Another way that we can represent the same data visually is with what's called an ogive. An ogive, as I have an example here on the right, is a line graph that displays the cumulative frequencies for our data. Each dot is going to represent the upper class boundary. And the first class boundary is always going to start at zero. And of course, it needs titles and labels. So now I can see where the cumulative frequencies of these basketball player heights fall all the way up till we have all 17 falling under 74 and a half inches. But I can definitely see the steepest height comes between 49.5 and 61.5. That's where you see most of the players falling in before it levels out. Excel can also make an ogive, but it calls it a scatter plot with straight lines. That's what we want to select. And again, we're going to have to make some edits to correct it. First, we always need to add a row for the first dot to fall at zero. Next, we have to tell Excel what minimum bound, where do we want the counting to start at, and what major unit I want for the x-axis. How wide is my class? And of course, we're going to need to add a title and labels. So first, I need to add a row in for my upper bounds. I need to add a row in for the zero that if I click row 12 with a right click and hit insert, it's going to stick a row up above. Now I need to back up my class width from that previous upper bound. So I'll hit equals, select the 8.5 and subtract 8 because we said 8 was our width. Now I have my upper bound value. The ogive is particularly interested in cumulative frequency, so we'll give that cumulative frequency a zero. Then I'll select the upper bound row. Holding control, I'll select the cumulative frequency row, and we're ready to make our ogive. I'll hit insert. There's lots of charts. Click the scatter plot one. And then we'll select the scatter plot with straight lines to make our ogive. I'm going to play with the dimensions a bit. A couple things we need to adjust. One is the x-axis. So I'm going to click the numbers of the x-axis and come over here to axis options. Click this histogram looking thing and click Axis Options. You'll see the bounds. It wants to know what minimum value we want on our axis. Make that the first upper bound value of 0 0.5. And then for the major units, I want to select my class width of 8. Now I see all my classes coming across as perfect. I need to set a chart title, because chart title is not descriptive. We're still talking about commuting distance. And I need labels for my x and y axes. Right now, there's no labels, but next to my chart, there's a plus sign. Clicking plus, I can ask for axes titles. And now I can put in an axes title, such as distance miles. And on the y axis, we'll call it the cumulative. Now I've got a good looking ogive going. So in this video, we started to take a look at visually representing the frequency of data from a study using frequency distributions, histograms, and related topics such as the ogive. I wish you luck as you continue to practice with these. Keep up the hard work. You're doing great.